native people. In 2000, all of a sudden there began to be this huge escalating problem of more and more and more children being taken by the State Department of Social Services. And so I went out and started asking uh, different grandmothers and aunties and stuff all around through the state what was happening, why the kids were being taken. Of course, the people didn't know. All they knew was it was happening. And that they didn't really have access to any of the kind of upper echelons of the government structures to figure out why they were doing this. So I ended up going over to meet with the chairman of the state legislative committee that has oversight jurisdiction over all the state department of social services. I said to him, look, I'm, I'm getting uh, all kinds of information from you know, dozens and dozens of grandmothers that uh, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of these children being taken every year. And he said, oh, oh, a lot more than that. He said, he said, I, 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 he said yes, it's a virtual epidemic, he said. That was his term. It's a virtual epidemic. So I said, well, why is this happening? And he said, I don't know. He said, I don't know why. So I said, well, look, you're the chairman of the oversight committee here in the state legislature of South Dakota. You have a right to appoint an ombudsman to investigate this. And he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, uh, that would, uh, uh, that's an awful lot of money coming into this state every year. He said, that was his exact quote. And he said, uh, this would have legal implications, and I'd have to get that cleared by the attorney general. And so I, I figured he's just shining me on, right? He's just going to blow me off. But he goes over, and he picks up the telephone, and he calls over to the attorney general's office. And he says, I'd like to leave a, a note for, uh, for Attorney General Long, please. Uh, tell him that it's Ted Cloud over at the uh, Audit and Oversight Committee, and I've got a lawyer in here asking about all them Indian kids. Within 15 minutes, the Attorney General of the state of South Dakota is standing in his office and starting to blather at me. And so I said, wait a second, wait a second. Uh, if, if we all recognize that there's this epidemic going on, won't you agree to join with the chairman of the oversight committee to appoint an ombudsman to actually look into this? And he said, oh, no. He said, that's an awful lot of money coming into this state every year. He said, and uh, you'd have to sue us before we do anything like that. Well, that's, of course, music to my ears. So I, said, I said, oh, please don't throw me in that briar patch. Uh, and so, so what we did, we, we began to you know, go around and talk to our various people to, to see if it would be okay to set up an office there. Would the people be supportive of this? And they were, and we you know, brought in Madonna Thunderhawk and, uh, and uh, Joe Cross and uh, a bunch of the people that we knew to come in to be our staff. And so that we, we, had the, we had this virtually all Lakota staff there working on this thing, carrying out the investigations. And then we began to, we began to discover these uh, extraordinary things. This thing all started back when George W. Bush was the governor of Texas, uh, back from 1996 to 2000, before he was put into the presidency in 2000. As the governor, he was the very first governor in the entire country to decide that he was going to establish as a condition precedent for any child being able to be put into the Texas state foster care system that they had to get a mental health screening test uh, that is completely culturally warped, uh, completely biased against the, the, the children. And it turns out that when Native American children are given this test, 98% of the children will flunk this test and be found to be special needs children. And the state of Texas discovered that they could get up to $79,000 every year for a special needs child as long as the child remained in the foster care system and wasn't sent back to their, their families. And so they set up this algorithm starting all the way out with Ridland and working its way all the way up through uh, through. Uh, well, they, what were they? Prozac, Prozac and Zyprexa, and, 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 and they had this whole algorithm for the kids. Said, well, this one doesn't seem to be changing their attitude. I mean, these people are still acting like Indians. And so he comes into Washington, D.C., and one of the very first things that he did was he appointed a hand-picked Blue Ribbon Committee to ask them to determine whether or not he should set up a condition on any of the federal funds going out to any state under the Adoption and Save Families Act, that they had to implement the Texas mental health 
algorithm project in their state. And, uh, and they surprisingly recommended that he do that. At his inauguration, it turns out that his good friend, Bill Janklo, who was the attorney, the assistant attorney general of the state of South Dakota, who called in the Nixon administration people at the Wounded Knee occupation, he got invited to come to the inauguration uh, in, in, uh, in, in 2001, January 2001. And while he's in Washington, D.C., he sits down and has a meeting with George W. Bush and his friends who then explained to him the bonanza that he has in the state of South Dakota. Don't you realize what you're sitting on there? You're sitting on a gold mine where you can, in fact, for every Lakota child you can get your hands on, you can designate them as special needs kids and get $79,000 per kid every single year. You keep them in the system, and you can give part of that money to the, the pharmaceutical corporations who will, in turn, they'll give contributions to the Republican Party. It turns out 742 Native children every single year were being taken away from their mothers, from their entire Lakota family, from their entire Teoshpai, from their tribe, from their entire Native culture, and placed in white foster care settings. And they've also sponsored a bill which now authorizes them to do protocols on Native children to determine you know, what type of effects these protocol, these type of pharmaceutical drugs have, which as it turns out, coincidentally, they're not allowed to give to children under the age of 18. And the head of the Child Protection Division of the South Dakota Department of Social Services, whose name is Regina Weasler, is signing these things for these children to allow them to give those doses to those children. And the children are drooling on their shirt, cutting themselves, getting suicidal. You know, all of the exact symptoms that were publicly identified by the Food and Drug Administration as to why you cannot give these particular pharmaceuticals to children under the age of 18. These people are profound and fundamentally racist. That is the key engine that motivates these people. That we're dealing with the Caucasian race. That these people are fundamental, intense dialecticians. And that they derive their entire sense of being and value from opposing some other. They're, they live in terror. They're, they're deeply alienated. Uh, they, they take great pride in their intellect and that they've alienated themselves from any type of organic relationship with the, with the universe, with the earth, with the natural processes of, of the planet. And uh, they view the aboriginal people as being an absolute fundamental threat to them. And that is why they want to try to extinguish the people. And that the, the, the native people, and among them, uh, the Lakota, as we know, that there's a, a certain reputation that the Lakota have, a certain reputation the Ogallala have there, that has to be, has to be organized among themselves to bring that to the fore and to reestablish the Ocheti Sakawan, Wiyate. The, the seven council fires of the Lakota people and uh, to have this template established of taking control back from the states to stop them from taking their children away to, to make the federal government transfer funds to them as reparations for what's been done to them to provide for the training and the assistance that, they, that the people need and it's important to remember that the, the, the Ogallala spiritual leaders of Nacha will tell you that they know that the Wachich uh, culture is going to collapse, that it cannot continue the way that it is, that they are, they are uh, fouling their own nest constantly, and that they're going to destroy themselves. And so the, the, the people, the native people, have to start to move now to reestablish their sense of self-sufficiency and to be able to stand alone so that when, in fact, the white culture collapses, they will be able to provide for themselves and their children. And it's a deep and abiding spiritual belief that the people have. And one might say that the objective data supports that pretty seriously right now.